genius job. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise that make my list for the 10 best episodes of the original series of Star Trek. Sir, would you mind explaining that statement, please? This is just a list of my favorites, so if you don't agree with me, please don't take my head off for Pete's sake. You ain't gonna have no head to put your hands over. Episode number 10 is... A piece of the action. The Enterprise visits a planet where the aliens are trying to imitate 1920s gangster mobs on Earth. This episode was comedic in tone. The amount and the nature of the humor succeeded with me and made it a very enjoyable episode. Right? Unquestionably. Thought you guys had laws. No interference. Who's interfering? We're taking over. Check. Right. Before Star Trek, there was a TV series I enjoyed called The Untouchables. It was a dramatic series centering around Prohibition-era gangster mobs. One episode starred Anthony Caruso as a mob leader. Yeah, what about those feds? What about the feds? Fed's got no right to interfere unless someone beefs. Everyone that matters is in on the take. I was thinking. You feds must have made a lot of improvements since that other ship came here. Then I'll take over, and all you have to do is deal with me. Episode 9 on my list is The Trouble with Tribbles. The purchase of a seemingly innocuous, lovable little animal as a pet leads to overwhelming problems on the Enterprise. One of the things I liked about this episode was one of the minor characters, Chekhov, got some time to spotlight some of his personality. One parsec, sir. Close enough to smell them. That is illogical, Ensign. Odors cannot travel through the vacuum of space. Along with Chekhov, Scotty got some time, too. We're big enough to take a few insults. That's sagging. Old rust buckets is designed like a garbage scow. Don't you think you should rephrase that i didn't mean to say that the enterprise should be hauling garbage i meant to say that it should be hauled away as garbage <laughs> another thing i appreciated about this episode is it laid down something early in the episode which had a later payoff that was essential for captain kirk to solve his problems <laughs> I prefer this kind of writing instead of pull it out of thin air, last minute techno babble solution to the problems. Episode number eight on my list is The Doomsday Machine. This is an exciting episode with a powerful alien weapon destroying everything in sight. William Wyndham does an excellent job acting in this episode as a Captain Ahab type character driven insane by the machine. Don't you think I know that? There was but not anymore. Episode 7 is Space Seed. This episode has one of the best villains Kirk ever had to face, a genetically produced superhuman named Khan. Ricardo Montalban was a great choice for the character Khan. It was an excellent casting choice. He does such a great job with the character. He gives William Shatner a run for his money for chewing up scenery. Each of you in turn will go in there. Die while the others watch. Of course, there's a great fight scene where Kirk has to go hand to hand with Khan. I have five times your strength. Kirk must rely on his brains rather than his brawn. Remarkably, he's able to keep his shirt on. This episode and the character Khan were so well liked that years later when they started doing Star Trek films, they did a sequel to this story. Episodes 6 and 5 are included together because they are a two-parter, and their names are... These two episodes include filmed scenes from the original pilot that was turned down for a series. The writing was very clever with how they incorporated the scenes into the new series. Sir, this is a security area. What are you doing here? I have security clearance, Chief. Mr. Spock acting mysteriously against his nature was an intriguing part of the plot. Mr. Spock's trial was a great dramatic device to keep the tension up while gradually revealing the plot from the original pilot. Are you aware in pleading guilty that a further charge involving the death penalty must be held against you? What does it accomplish to go there or to take Captain Pike there? I want to know why. 
I was curious what you viewers thought of the characters in the original pilot. Did you like Captain Pike as much as Captain Kirk? What do you think of the potential for the show had the pilot been picked up as a series? Did you like the character number one and Mr. Spock's personality? Episode number four is The Devil in the Dark. The Enterprise is sent to help an important mining colony where 50 people have been killed by a mysterious creature. I liked that it was non-humanoid yet intelligent being. And also the motives of the creature and how to control it weren't so obvious. Another small mystery was introduced that later came into play. Silicon nodule. There are a million of them down there. No commercial value. Lastly, I enjoyed that the skills and abilities of both Mr. Spock and Dr. McCoy were essential in solving the problem with the creature on the planet. Help it. Treat it. I'm a doctor, not a bricklayer. Episode 3 is The Corbamite Maneuver. While star mapping, the Enterprise encroaches on the space of an unknown and powerful alien society. I like that this episode demonstrates the quick-thinking cleverness of Captain Kirk. Not chess, Mr. Spark. Poker. As I mentioned before, I prefer this type of writing compared to the technobabble that was too often employed on The Next Generation, where Geordi would say, you know, I could reverse the polarity on the bleepity bloop, and that'll solve our problems instantaneously. I can understand what Kirk's trying to do. I can judge how smart it is and the potential risk. I can't do that with reversing the polarity because it's just a bunch of made-up nonsense, and I think just lazy writing. Another episode that demonstrates good writing and actually refers back to this episode is The Deadly Years. Early in the episode, they set up something that a Starfleet code has been broken that has a later payoff. A savvy viewer may be able to guess that Captain Kirk's going to use the information right before he does. That's an order, Lieutenant. Code 2. We'll implement the struct order using Cobramite device recently installed. Even if a viewer does not predict it, they can appreciate Captain Kirk's ability to think back to something in the past and quickly implement it to solve a tense situation. The technobabble solutions typically had no setup and they were just pulled out of thin air at the last minute. And now for some... Switching the screen, I believe I can get something visual. I request a date with that good-looking blonde, Yeoman Brand. Fascinating. Request denied. So you have chosen death. Episode 2 is Mirror, Mirror. An ion storm causes a transporter malfunction sending Kirk and a landing party to an alternate universe. Instead of a peaceful federation, there's an evil empire. The main drama comes from Kirk and his crew try to navigate in their new surroundings without revealing themselves. They also have the problem of trying to stay alive with the way that society functions in the alternate universe. So you die, Captain. And we all move up in rank. No one will question the assassination of a captain who has disobeyed prime orders of the empire. It was fun to see the characters behaving in ways we don't normally see them in the so-called good universe. Oh my. In the alternate universe, Mr. Spock's still pretty sharp. I don't know why this scene tickles me, but Mr. Spock, he puts Sulu on notice. You better watch your step. It's your play. I suggest you remember that my operatives would avenge my death, and some of them are Vulcans. <laughs> And the number one absolutely best episode is The City on the Edge of Forever. This episode features the big three, Kirk, Spock, and Dr. McCoy. McCoy starts the story by entering an alien device and somehow changing the timeline. Kirk and Spock must go back in time and solve the mystery of what McCoy did and somehow prevent it from happening. DeForest Kelly gets to play Dr. McCoy in a way that we normally don't see him as he was accidentally injected with a drug. Murderers! Assassins! 
under the influence, did he commit some heinous act? Is that what changed history? There are a few brief fish-out-of-water comedic scenes. Perhaps the unfortunate accident I had as a child. The unfortunate accident he had as a child. He caught his head in a mechanical rice picker. I don't think they detracted from the dramatic elements, but instead added to the likability of the episode. A critical element of the story is that Kirk meets and falls in love with a beautiful woman. I think Joan Collins that plays the love interest and William Shatner successfully sell that there's a chemistry and attraction between the two. Time travel plots can be convoluted, confusing, but this episode succeeded on all levels. It deserves rating of number one episode of the original series. As for the ending, was it a happy ending? They succeeded in rectifying the timeline, but at what cost? You know what you just did? He knows, Doctor. He knows. He knows. I know. Cyclops, the one-eyed groundhog, only has one eye and knows. My cat's asleep and she knows. This is the best episode of Star Trek. If your top 10 is different than mine, put something down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. As I said before, though, just don't take my head off. Ah!